I'm Nina Galan, and in this video we're going to draw a dragon's eye. And you, know, you can see it right behind me. And we're going to uh, pay special attention to the 3D uh, dimension of the eye and the brightness of the eye. We will start out with the dry brush technique, and then we will continue the drawing with going over it with a regular pencil and coloring pencils. It's really nice to do. Let's get started. This is a pre-study that I've done. It's in pencil and also in some kind of ink. It's an ink pen. And also I've tried out a little bit for the background with uh, this kind of uh, stiff like. And I want the dragon's eye to stand out uh, in front of a dark uh, background. I've chosen for the eye to work with the dry brush technique. And I will use the dry brush uh, for the setup because that is a quick way to set up the eye. And then we will continue with uh, the pencils, graphite pencil. And for the dry brush technique, you only have to use a little bit of oil. It's black uh, oil paint and a broad uh, brush which is uh, flat and you can easily uh, draw very quickly the outline of the dragon and it's a nice and uh, fast way to set up a sketch it's very rough but uh, as we continue you will see that uh, the roughness will be smoothed out with the pencil For the eye, I simply use a, a smooth line and it's kind of rounded and kind of a mandel shape form. There are a lot of scales on the top of the eyepiece and I simply uh, make lines with uh, making use of the flatness of the pencil also put in the pupil and you can see how fast this works because I didn't um, speed up the time anything or that so this is as quick as you can draw your uh, dragon and it's very very quick uh, you get results very easily and you just keep your brush straight up uh, it's a disadvantage that you cannot really see now what I'm doing, but I'm making quick brushes, brush strokes, and I easily set in the shadows with a little bit of oil paint. And that's all it takes. You can see how far the oil paint stretches, because I've only dipped it in once, and I already have an eye. Here I take a little bit more oil paint and now and then I just take out a little bit somewhere else to make the worst, the most of the paint go off my brush and then I can go and dive into the eye again. You can see I'm still holding the brush straight up. As it is a flat brush, I can easily put in the scales on top of the eye. Also the scales around the eye are easily put in there, applied and it's a very quick way of drawing but it's really really rough
also the wrinkles around the eyes are put in and you can see I've taken about three wrinkles, wrinkles around the eye and for the top of the eye I use the very hard scales. Top of the eye, there are two uh, pointy horns, and I just put them in because I think it makes the eye look even more dangerous. As the eye stretches, I take out some kind of a line to give the eye the movement of like going forward. So it's kind of a, a real stripe-like line that's coming out of the eye. Just ease in the paint with the brush with uh, quick strokes. I really have to get the paint into the paper. I just keep going over and over the lines I've drawn already and I smooth out the paint. You can use the same brush to already give a little bit of darkness for the surrounding of the dragon. Later on I will be using a graphite to fill it all in, but this is just for the feel. Now that I have my rough sketch, I take out a 5B pencil. It's a soft one. and. If you want to draw this way, so it's a combined technique of, of um, dry brush and, and pencil, you will notice how easily your pencil will move over the paint of your, uh, your black oil paint. It just blends in together so easily and so nicely. If you want to see exactly how to use and what to use for the dry brush technique, please watch my movie on how to paint with the dry brush. Hey, what is this? It's my cat again. Go away. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, uh, if you want to see exactly what kind of paper and what kind of material to use when uh, doing this technique, please watch some of my movies about it. What you see me doing here is, in fact, I just follow the rough strokes that I've made with my brush. This gives it a nice and 3D effect and the, the drawing really comes alive. By shading in and following the strokes, the, the light parts really pop out and the dark parts seem to be moving away. So that gives it that really realistic look. The 
inside of the eye. You want it to be extra dark, especially between the bridge of the eye and the eyeball, and uh, between the scales, for instance. You can make it extra dark to make the scales stand out. Here, for instance, if I want a big part to be kind of moving away or laying flat, I simply shade it in or I place here a dark piece so that makes it look go down and the lines go up. You can easily rub your finger over your painting, it's no problem at all. When you're happy with the scales you've drawn, you can put in extra dark shadows. It will make the scales stand out even more and make it look rounded. Also for the wrinkles around the wrinkles around the eye, I use the same technique. I really press hard on my pencil now and I get in there really, really dark. Dragon eyes are so nice to study because you can simply use your imagination and I'm making this one up just as I'm drawing. I just looked at some eyes and I've looked at some chicken eyes and snake eyes and dragon eyes also of course by other artists and it's so nice to study them. This is my eraser pencil and the nice thing about uh, the dry brush technique is that you still can use your eraser on it. The highlight that I've taken out with my eraser, I want to stand out even better. So now I'm putting in a little bit of definition in the eyeball itself. It's kind of tricky to have the highlights on the eyeball because the eyeball is rounded and you need to get the feel and do not lose the, rounded, the roundness of the eyeball itself. Here I'm using my eraser pen again and you can see I'm taking out a little bit of the really really dark stuff and what you also can use is uh, a pastel pencil or even uh, a greasy white pencil you can also use to get extra whiteness in your drawing. You can also use that on the scales if you want. But it's hard to get it in really good because the graphite itself is very greasy. So it works only a little bit. Now it's time for some color. I'm using a orange color and it may seem a little bit strange, but later on I will also be using green. And orange and green are complementary, complementary colors. So uh, together they are uh, um, giving uh, each other extra strength. You 
can see also that I'm not filling in the complete eye, but only parts I make orange. In the middle of the eye, I give extra pressure on my pencil to make it look really, really orange. You can have gradations of orange simply by pressing hard or pressing lightly on your pencil. I also apply a little bit of color on the head of the dragon. Also here, again, I'm not coloring in every part, just the high parts and some of a little bit of the low parts and it just gives the suggestion of color. Here's my green pencil. I want the dragon to have a greenish appearance and also here I'm not putting in green all around the head. Just little bit of parts of green to give the suggestion that this dragon is a green one. You can see now how nice the orange and the green work together. This is what I mean with complementary. Easily put the colored pencil over your uh, simple graphite pencil strokes. That's no problem at all. Now pink. Whoa, this is pink you say? Yes, it's really really pink. And I need that for the fleshy part in the eye. Just a little bit, not too much pink, but just a few lines are enough to give it that flashy eye look. For the surrounding, I use a big graphite bar. It's very quick, and because I'm a lazy artist, and I really hate uh, filling in big parts, I use the graphite bar, and then for the really dark parts and the, the sharp lines for the contour of the dragon, I use the pencil. I've speeded up the time here because it's kind of boring to look at, but you will get the picture. I just want the background to be dark. I use that to make the eye stand out even better. If you want the pupil for instance to be extra extra black, you can use the filling pencil again. You could even use uh, Oost Indian inked if you want, that's no problem, but it's sometimes a little bit hard to get it all in there because the graphite is kind of greasy, so it's not easy, but it works if you just keep going over it. Well, this is the study of a dragon eye, I wish you all the luck with it. And I hope you enjoyed watching this a lot. If you did, please give it a like. And maybe you want to subscribe. Please take care. And I hope to see you next time.